بيان أن الله هو معين المؤمن هو معين المؤمن على إيمانه والكافر على كفره Clarification that Allah is the enabler of the believer to believe and of the disbeliever to disbelieve or the empowerer the empowerer of the believer to believe and of the disbeliever to disbelieve ilam anna qawla ba'd al-awam kullu wahid ala dini Allah yu'inu know that what some commoners say this arabic statement that i just read to you it has it could be taken in more than one way but if you take it one way you'll translate it one way if you take it another way you'll translate it another way in terms of translating it in in terms of translating it into english but the arabic statement stays the same kull wahidin ala dinihi allah yu'inu that's what some commoners say the shaykh says yuhkam ala qailihi bi hasab ma yafhamuhu min al ma'na the one who said this statement so looks like it's saying everyone is on his religion allah helps him or everyone is on his religion yani everyone is on his own religion allah enables him okay but look, it could be saying according to arabic language everyone is on his religion may allah enable him may allah support him it's possible in the arabic language that that's a supplication there كل واحد على دينه everyone's on his own religion الله يعينه may Allah help him يعني may Allah help everyone upon a different religion so that's one way that that statement could be taken because you could say what looks like a sentence but it means a supplication just like we say صلى الله على محمد it means may the salawat of Allah be upon Muhammad but the way it's worded could be saying the salawat of Allah are upon Muhammad it's not a supplication then it's a statement so this one's like that kullu wahidin one would say kullu wahidin ala dinihi allahu yu'inu everyone is on his own religion allahu yu'inu may allah help him that's kufr but not if someone were saying allah yu'inu allah is the one who empowers him and he doesn't accept kufr then he doesn't fall into kufr so the one who says this yuhkamu ala qailihi bi hasab ma yafhamuhu min al ma'na the one who said it will be judged in accordance with his understanding of the meaning fa in arada du'a lil mu'mini an yu an yu'inahu allah ala al iman so if what he meant was to supplicate for the believer for Allah to empower the believer to believe and also to supplicate for the disbeliever for Allah to empower the disbeliever to disbelieve if that's what one meant by this statement kafar then he committed blasphemy لِأَنَّهُ حِينَ إِذِينَ يَكُونُ رَضِيَ بِالْكُفْرِ Because upon that he would be accepting of blasphemy, accepting of disbelief. وَأَمَّا إِنْ أَرَادَ الْإِخْبَارَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الَّذِي أَعَانَ الْمُؤْمِنَ أَعَانَ الْمُؤْمِنَ عَلَى إِيمَانِهِ But if a person, he only wanted to tell another one that Allah is the one who empowers the believer to believe. Wa huwa allazi a'ana al-kafira 'ala kufri. And he is the one who enabled the disbeliever to disbelieve. Wa la yukaffar then if this is what he meant he's not deemed as a disbeliever. Li anna ta'bira bi i'anati al-mu'mini 'ala imanihi wal-kafiri 'ala kufrihi sarraha bihi ghayru wahid min al-'ulama. He would not be deemed as a blasphemer if this is what he understood from his statement because to express oneself to put into words that Allah enables or empowers 
the believer to believe and enables or empowers the disbeliever to disbelieve. To say that so uh, blatantly and straightforwardly, that's not blasphemy. No one's going to be shocked by that statement but someone who has weak knowledge. More than one scholar did express this case. He worded this case like this. In the book, in the commentary of As-Safti, it is documented therein, quote, It is documented in the book, Al-Mukhtar. إذا ثم عند ذبح الشاة المسروقة لا تؤكل لا تؤكل على الأصح. So he wants to mention a statement here, giving you a heads up. Now the statement I'm reading uh, is not deemed the reliable saying by some scholars. What I'm about to read now, I didn't read it to you. Is not deemed the reliable saying according to some scholars. So what is that? If a person stole a sheep, so that's now stolen property, and then when he slaughtered that sheep, he said, Bismillah. According to this book we're quoting from, that slaughtered animal is inedible according to what's most accurate. Uh, so I didn't want to leave you on a cliffhanger to know that this statement is not the strongest statement. This is something said. What is that? What's said? What's the position of some scholars? It was said that if a person had a stolen sheep and then when he slaughtered it, he said, Bismillah. Some said, this is blasphemy. Because he becomes an apostate for that. So according to this saying, why this is blasphemy? Because seeking blessings in the name of something is only conceivable when one has permission or when this is accepted. So that if one were to do such a thing, that would mean that Allah accepts. Uh, yeah. If a person were, yani, so if somebody were to do that, he, if someone were to steal a sheep, and then slaughter that stolen sheep in the name of Allah. That would mean, according to him, yani, according to the scholars who are saying this position, they're imposing on the one who did this. This would mean, according to them, that since he said it in the name of Allah, then he is uh, making Allah to be someone who accepts his deed. يعني فإذا فعل ذلك يقتضي أن الله راض بذلك. If he did that and if he were true, يعني he stole the sheep and he said بسم الله when he slaughtered the sheep. So according to those who said this is blasphemy, they're explaining why that's blasphemy according to them. Because if he did that in reality, that would dictate that Allah would be accepting of him. يعني they're saying, if it's legal to say Bismillah for this slaughtered, for this stolen sheep, then it's basically you're saying Allah accepts. So that's blasphemy. That's what they said. If one believed that, he would blaspheme. قال شيخنا الأمير But Al-Amir said, وهذا مردود This is rejected. Saying this is blasphemy, he stole the sheep. And then he said, Bismillah, when he slaughtered the sheep. You're saying that's blasphemy? Hadha mardud, that's rejected. That's not blasphemy. 
لأن الإنسان يستعين بالله في جميع شهواته because the human being he seeks God's help for all of his desires لأنه المعين على الخير والشر because Allah is the one who empowers the evil the good and the evil so how does the slave rely on or depend on Allah for the sin just by the mere fact that when he's a monotheist believing slave just for the fact that he knows that the footsteps that he's taking towards his sin Allah created them but he wants to do the sin so really he's hoping that Allah will give him the footsteps that he needs to complete that sin and if he has money and he's a monotheist and he wants to spend it in sin then he would be believing that he could only do that if Allah will. And so really, he is, in a way, seeking God's help to sin. Because he has in his convictions, really, that no matter what he does, good or evil, Allah was the one who created it. That's just as we thank Allah for enabling us to use the bathroom. One of us would relieve himself in the bathroom, and then he praises God. And he says, praise God to praise God who enabled me to relieve myself. So in all of what the slave does, he relies on Allah. So we're not going to say that's blasphemy if he said, Bismillah for that slaughtered, for that stolen sheep. The fact is that Allah is the enabler to do good and to do evil. وذكر الشيخ محمد المكي المالكي. So are we talking about one's intention? We're talking about here, let's say, an outward situation, which is, let's say, someone stole a sheep, and you knew he stole the sheep, and then he took his blade and he said Bismillah when he cut the throat of this stolen sheep. So is it kufr or is not kufr for him to do that? Some scholars said it's kufr. Because if what he's doing is valid, that would mean that Allah accepts. He said, therefore, that's blasphemy because Allah doesn't accept haram. Uh, others, they said, no, it's not going to be kufr. So you, we're not talking about his intention, let's say. I'm not talking about his intention right now. Just what appears that this guy, you know him, for example, he stole a sheep and you know that. And then he said, Bismillah, when he slaughtered that sheep. So then you looking from the outside, when you see this man do that, according to the second saying, you don't deem him as a kafir. Don't say, oh, that's kufr. You just said Bismillah on the stolen sheep. Rather, what these scholars are saying is because a person said Bismillah over the stolen sheep, this is not blasphemy because the fact of the matter is that anything haram you do, you will be seeking from Allah to enable you. If you did anything haram and you believe in Allah properly, you believe in the oneness of God, and you believe in Qadar, destiny, and that God is the creator of everything, and no one else created anything. If that's your firm conviction, then if you did want to do something haram, then the fact of the matter is, you're hoping that Allah will enable you. We're not talking about the seeking of protection here. That's different. Yani, that's not their argument. One's arguing that it's kufr because it's rendering the deed acceptable. Saying, Bismillah, when slaughtering a stolen sheep, some said that's basically rendering the deed acceptable. So they said it's kufr. The other saying is that it's not kufr because, without saying he's seeking protection, we're st sticking here. He's seeking for God to enable him. I see, where's your question? But let's not go there. So let's just say, he's saying Bismillah. Others are saying, that's not kufr when he says Bismillah, because, because there's another way this can be taken. 
Yani, it could be that his case is like the case of anyone else who does some sin and really in his heart, he confesses to that God is the one who enables him to do it. So they're saying that slaughtering of the stolen sheep in the name of Allah is like that. Like the one who wants to do something haram. And he's aware that Allah is the one who enables him. It's not going to be blasphemy because of that awareness. He even hopes, actually. He even hopes because he wants to, to do the sin. He's interested in the sin and he wants to achieve it. And he believes firmly that Allah is the only creator of everything. That means that really he's even hoping that Allah will help him. So are we going to say he committed kufr there? No, we're not. We're not going to say he committed kufr there. وَذَكِرَ الشَّيْخُ Muhammad al-Makki al-Maliki fi kitabihi tahzib al-furuq ma nassuhu Shaykh Muhammad al-Makki the Maliki documented in his book Tahzib al-Furuq quote وَيُؤَيِّدُهُ مَا فِي آخِرِ صَيْدِ الدُّرِّ الْمُخْتَارِ What supports this is what's in the end of uh, the book of hunting in Adur al Mukhtar. What's in there is I saw written in the handwriting of a trustworthy one. Suriqa shatun or fadabahaha. Saraqa shatan fadabahaha bi tasmiyatin. Someone stole a sheep and then he slaughtered it in the name of Allah. فَوُجِدَ صَاحِبُهَا And then the owner of the sheep was found. هَلْ تُؤْكَلْ Would it be permissible to eat this? الْأَصَّحُ لَا لِكُفْرِهِ بِتَسْمِيَتِهِ عَلَى الْحَرَامِ الْقَطْرِ بِلَا تَمَلُّكٍ وَلَا إِذِنْ What's written there, that what's most accurate is that it's not permissible to eat this because the one who... Uh, slaughtered that sheep he committed blasphemy for slaughtering it for saying bismillah over something that's definitely haram without having any ownership and without having any permission into her so this author here he's he just quoted something and now he wants to not agree with it he says though our madhab He's Maliki talking, he's quoting a Hanafi book. He says, though our madhab is to prevent this from being a reason for deeming the person as a kafir. As long as he wasn't disrespectful. And he didn't deem it lawful. He's not a kafir. For indeed, Allah is the enabler of good and evil. Intaha, end quote. وَقَالَ إِمَامُ الْحَرَمَيْنِ الْجُوَيْنِ الشَّافِعِي فِي كِتَابِهِ الْإِرْشَادِ And Imam al-Haramayn al-Juwayni, the Shafi'i, said in his book, Al-Irshad, مَا نَصُّهُ Quote, ثُمَّ السَّلَفُ الصَّالِحُونَ كَمَا سَأَلُوا اللَّهَ تَعَالَى الْإِيمَانِ كَذَلِكَ سَأَلُوهُ أَنْ يُجَنِّبَهُمُ الْكُفُرُ Furthermore, he says, the pious forerunners, the pious salaf, just like they used to ask Allah for faith, they used to also ask him to help them avoid blasphemy. وَالْقُدْرَةُ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ قُدْرَةٌ عَلَى الْكُفُرُ عَلَى أُصُولِ الْمُعْتَزِلَةِ and according to the Mu'tazila, the power to believe, it is the power to commit kufr. Uh, yani, according to the Mu'tazila, let's say at 5 o'clock you wanted to believe. At that moment, you wanted to take the power to believe. So the Mu'tazila are saying, the power to believe is the same power to blaspheme. They're saying, then at 5 o'clock, once you chose to believe... You, in, you did that instead of choosing to disbelieve. So they're saying the power to believe, it is the power to disbelieve. You're just going to choose one or the other. That's what they said. It's not true, though. 
ولئن كان الرب معينا على الإيمان بخلق القدرة عليه فيجب أن يكون معينا على الكفر بخلق القدرة عليه And so then if the Lord is the one who enables faith by creating in someone the power to have faith then it is necessary that he is also the one who enables the disbelief by creating the power to disbelieve in the one who does so intaha and quote wa qala shaykh muhammad arafa so i'm not sure if that's fatha or dhamma dasuqi or dusuqi i don't remember al maliki shaykh muhammad arafa he's a maliki he said fi bayanihi al i'anata ma nasuhu he said in clarifying God's empowering or God's enabling. Quote, Qawluhu wa billahi ta'ala asta'een ay wa asta'eenu billahi ta'ala ala ta'leefi hadha sharh. He's explaining someone's words. He says, when the author said, and by Allah I seek help, he means I seek the help of Allah ta'ala in authoring this explanation. أي أطلب منه الإعانة على تأليفه. What he's saying is, I'm seeking from Allah the enabling, the empowerment to author this work. أي أطلب منه أن يخلق في القدرة على ذلك. Meaning, I seek from Him to create in me the power to do that. That's the meaning of الإعانة, enabling. So it can go to the good or go to the bad. وقال أبو عبد الله محمد الطالب ابن ابن حمدون ابن حمدون ابن الحاج المالكي ما نصه so أبو عبد الله محمد الطالب ابن حمدون ابن الحاج the Maliki he said quote وإنما طلبت معرفته تعالى معونته وإنما طلبت معونته تعالى. I have merely sought God's assistance. لأن من أعان الله لأن من أعانه الله تيسرت مطالبه ونجحت مآربه. Because if Allah helps someone, then he'll be successful. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُعِنْهُ لَمْ يَحْصُلْ عَلَى طَائِلْ And anyone whom Allah did not enable or empower, then he will not, get, you know, he will not acquire anything of goodness. وَإِنْ كَدَّ فِي دَهْرٍ طَائِلْ وَأَمَّا الْإِمَامُ فَخْرُ الدِّينِ الرَّازِي فَقَالَ فِي كِتَابِهِ مُحَصَّلُ أَفْكَارِ الْمُتَقَدِّمِينَ وَالْمُتَأَخِّرِينَ في معرض رده على بعض الغلاه. So Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, he said in his book, this book here, Muhassal, addressing the refutation of some of the radicals. ما نصه quote وأيضا فإنه تعالى يعين الكفرة على على المسلمين ويمكنهم من قتل أوليائه. He said also. God Almighty enables, empowers the disbelievers to be victorio victorious over believers, and He enables them to kill saints. فليس مرادهم بالإعانة هنا الرضا والمحبة. And so, enabling and empowering here in these spots, those scholars didn't mean acceptance, riba and mahabba. كما وهم بعض الناس like how some people were deluded about إنما معناه التمكين والإقدار the meaning of this إعانة is not acceptance it is enabling and empowering والله تعالى هو الذي يمكن العبد من عمل الخير وعمل الشر Allah Ta'ala is the one who enables the slave to do the good deed and enables the slave to do the bad deed. 
لأنه هو الذي خلق لسان لسان وفؤاد وجوارح المؤمن والكافر because he is the one who enables the slave to do good or to do evil because he's the one who created the human's tongue and heart and organs he created those of a believer and those of a disbeliever فَلَوْلَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَعْطَى الْمُؤْمِنَ الْقُدْرَةَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ So had it not been that Allah gave the power to believe to the believer, then he would not have believed. وَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ أَعْطَى الْكَافِرَ الْقُدْرَةَ عَلَى الْكُفْرِ لَمْ يَكْفُرْ And had it not been that he is the one who empowers the disbeliever to disbelieve, then he would not have disbelieved. وَتَفْسِيرُ الْإِعَانَةِ بِالْتَمْكِينِ وَالْإِقُدَارِ وَتَفْسِيرُ الْإِعَانَةِ بِالْتَمْكِينِ وَالْإِقُدَارِ مُوَافِقٌ وَمُنْسَجِمٌ مَعَ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And explaining i'ana, enabling or empowering as Tamkeen and iqdar, which is to enable or to empower, explaining it like this is compliant with the text of the religion. And it's harmonious with the text of the religion. Like the saying of Allah, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا The eighth ayah of Surah Al-Shams. Allah is the one who inspired the soul with its vice or with its piety so that proves that allah is the one who enables the good and the bad the 43rd verse of surah to najm it means allah is the one who makes someone cry and he is the one yeah, Allah is the one who makes someone laugh, and He is the one who makes someone cry. Yani, and that is the indication that He is the one who enables the good, and He is the one who enables the evil. Wallahu ta'ala alam, Allah knows best. <laughs>